Hello everyone, welcome back to the Vintage Model Company. Today we're doing the build video to show you how to turn your Balsa Simple Cut kit into the finished Simple Cut with all of its electronics and everything ready for flight. This model is extremely simple as it, uh, as it says on the tin or on the box. So I actually designed this aeroplane that you see before you. Um, it's built for beginners. It's supposed to be very, very easy to put together. It's also extremely easy to fly. What with its high wing here and uh, its yeah, very gentle uh, flight characteristics, as you'll see later in the video from the flying segment. This is the ideal trainer aeroplane for anyone who wants to get started with building aeroplanes but also wants an easy to fly, maybe first plane even. Um, having said that, if you are a builder of other aircraft like foam board aircraft, this is a great introductory model to the world of balsa wood and uh, traditional aeroplane building techniques. One of the big advantages over foam and other sort of ready to fly aircraft is that these things really do last forever. Um, if you treat them well. This one has been designed to be as robust as possible. It's got a really nice strong spar in the wing. Um, it's got a really nice boxy, simple to build fuselage. Everything is laser cut, so it won't take you very long. You don't have to cover the whole thing like I've got here. If you just want to get out and fly, you can just cover the wing and uh, set up all the, all the control surfaces. These are solid pieces of uh, material, so you don't really have to cover them. It's just for waterproofing and for aesthetics. Um, you can also paint the fuselage and tail. So yeah, you can really do what you want with this plane. I've designed it to be as uh, versatile as possible. So it's not just for beginners or complete beginners. It's also for people who want a bit of a, uh, a platform to customize and to, uh, to do what they want with it. So why don't we get our materials set out on the bench and then we'll get started. In your kit, you will find several sheets of balsa and one sheet of three millimeter plywood. These sheets contain all of the laser cut components you'll need to assemble your own balsa simple cup. Also in the kit are some mylar hinges needed for the tail along with some other hardware. You will find push rod wire, some thicker landing gear wire and a wooden dowel. There will also be a set of control horns for connecting the push rods to the tail of the cub. Along with the kit, you'll need your own radio system. This is used to control the aircraft using the transmitter handset and a receiver that goes inside your model. You will need a flight battery of the correct size and your onboard electronics. The cub has been designed around this, the Flight Test Power Pack B, which we are currently stocking on our online store. This pack includes a motor, speed controller, servos, two propellers, hardware and much more. For this tutorial, I'll be gluing everything together using this CA superglue, which really makes for a speedy build. However, you can use normal PVA wood glue or any other model aircraft glue designed for use on balsa. Okay, first it's a good idea to set up your electronics. To bind your radio to your transmitter, start by connecting your motor and electronic speed controller together. Plug in each of the three bullet connectors. Don't worry about the order for now, just make sure that each is connected. Next, plug in the ESC lead to the throttle channel of your receiver. Ensure that the lead is the right way round. On a spectrum system, the yellow or lightest colour wire should be closest to the text on the receiver. Now insert your bind plug to the bind pins on your receiver. One of these plugs should be provided with your radio system. Now ensuring that there's no prop on your motor, plug in your flight battery, then power on your transmitter whilst holding the bind button. Now your receiver should be connected, indicated by a solidly illuminated orange LED. Next check the direction of your motor by increasing the power slightly. If the motor rotates the wrong way, simply unplug your battery and switch two of the three motor bullet connectors to reverse it. When powering the system back on, you should now see that the motor spins the other way. To check that the position of your servos are neutral, to prepare them for installation later on, 
plug them into the aileron and elevator channels on your receiver. With that done, we can start on building the balsa airframe of your cub. We're going to start with a wing, so collect all of these pieces from your laser cut sheets along with a main plywood spar from the ply sheet. Make sure to be very careful when releasing the parts if you use a knife. Okay, first we're going to prepare the spar so that we can install all of the wing ribs and get the wing looking a little bit more like a wing. To do this, take these doubler pieces and make sure that they are orientated the right way. Next, take the dowel included in the kit and cut two short lengths of around 2.5cm or 1 inch. These can next be firmly pressed into the two holes in the main spar. If you haven't guessed yet, these are used to perfectly align the balsa doublers over the ply spar, so push each doubler down and perhaps add a little glue between them. The kit is mostly designed to go together without glue to start with, each component self-jigging itself in place. If you are using normal wood glue though, you might want to add glue to each piece as you go, so it's sort of up to you. Now add the ribs by simply slotting them into the spar like this. At this point you can position the wing tips and the leading and trailing edges to see your wing come together. Make sure to get these the right way around though. The leading edges at the front of the wing are thinner than the trailing edges at the rear of the wing. With the middle ribs, these are doubled up before adding them to the central slot on the spar. Press the leading and trailing edges into position. Check each connection carefully and make sure that everything looks square at this point. Next you can fully square up the assembly by adding one of the wingtip parts. Remember to add the secondary wingtip former to its slot towards the trailing edge of this part. Of course, you'll need to do this on both sides. Thank you. 
Okay, at this point with the super glue, you can go over each connection on the wing and run some glue into the join, making sure to keep an eye on the overall squareness. Also, ensure that each part is firmly pressed up against the next so as to get a super strong bond with the glue. Okay, now on to my favourite part of the build, the fuselage. This is the body of the plane that holds all of your electronics and is made using these balsa sheet pieces and a bunch of strong plywood formers. Firstly, we're going to focus on the ply components. Remove all of these parts from the ply sheet, set them down on your build table, and then identify these five parts. For this stage of the build, it is quite important that you again get everything square. If you don't have a square tool, simply cut a fairly large triangle from some scrap balsa found in the kit. This sub-assembly that we're piecing together here is actually the power pod that will go at the nose of the aircraft. Make sure that the sloping rear end of this side piece is at the back next to the hole on the floor component. Mirror this with a second side piece. Now add the top. After this you can glue on the frontal firewall which is where the motor will be bolted onto. To make sure that everything is aligned you can use the table to get the firewall flush. Okay now the power pod is done you can test fit it into the slots on one of the fuselage side pieces. Don't glue it in at this stage though. Make sure that the sloping rear end of the pod matches the angled tab. Right, before going much further with the fuselage formers, we need to make the landing gear. So grab the thick landing gear wire. You will also need to grab a pair of pliers, a ruler and a marker pen of some description. We're going to mark out some measurements and then make a few bends to essentially form a big V shape. Firstly, mark one inch from the end of the wire. Next, mark 5.5 inches from the last mark. Now mark 5.5 inches again. And finally, another inch. Cut the wire at the last mark that you made and then you can get on with the bending. Bend the middle of the wire to approximately 90 degrees at the middle mark. You can then reference the holes made in this former to see if you need to bend the wire some more. Once you have this spot on, you can bend the outer ends up at the one inch marks. Use the table to see if your bends are slightly crooked. It is important to get the outer axles spot on so that your cub's wheels align properly. If they're not, then the aircraft might not track straightly on the ground. So yes, it's probably a good idea to do this at this stage.
Next, you can take some thread and lash the wire to the former. Go slightly overboard here as it will make sure that your landing gear is super strong and resistant to hard landings, which is very important if you're a beginner pilot, of course. Pull the thread tight and then add a few drops of super glue to make it all completely solid. Okay, now you have the power pod and the formers ready for permanent installation. I find that the best way to go from here is to loosely place the power pod and the last two formers like this before matching up the bottom and the rear halves of the fuselage side. Using the tabs you can get the two halves of the fuselage side completely spot on before adding some glue. Now we can permanently fix the formers to the side of the fuselage. Again, make sure that the power pod is the right way around with the sloping rear side matching the sloping tab. This landing gear former can be a bit tricky, what with the protruding wire. So simply hold it up in the air while you add some glue or sort of hold it off the edge of a table or something. Take care to orientate the former so that the wire faces the front. With the formers in place, you can attach the opposite fuselage side. Add some glue to all of the formers aside from the last one in the tail. With the tail, bring the two sides together and make sure that they look nice and symmetrical before adding any glue. If you're using PVA or some other slow drying adhesive here, you might want to hold the tail together with some elastic bands whilst it dries. Helpfully, however, I was using this 5 second super glue on this occasion, so I didn't have to bother with any of that. Finally, make sure to also glue the very rear of the fuselage together. With that, you should have something resembling a Cub fuselage, complete with landing gear and ready for some final parts. The next section of the build focuses on getting your electronics installed. If you set up your gear at the start, this should be fairly straightforward. First, you can unplug your receiver from the ESC, just to make life a little easier. You'll also need to disconnect the motor bullet connectors, perhaps making a note of which goes where. Now you can take two of the screws from your power pack hardware and screw the motor mount to the firewall in the nose of your cub. I like to angle my motor so that the wires protrude from the bottom. Next, you can pass the wires through the hole in the firewall. These should be easily accessed through the top of the power pod.
At this point you can reinsert your bullet connectors and connect the motor to the ESC. The ESC can be secured onto the floor of the power pod with some glue. However, I quite like using tape so that you can easily remove it if you want to transfer the power system from one airframe to another. With the cup, you can quite easily remove and reinstall the electronics even when the aircraft is fully built. This means that you can test new motors and different setups without building an entirely new airframe. Make sure to feed the battery lead through the hole in the power pod floor. The ESC receiver lead can be fed back through the landing gear former into the main compartment that sits under the wing. Plug this wire back into the receiver port. Now is probably a good time to power the system back on and to check that the motor is running the correct way. With the ESC exposed, you can easily reach in and swap the leads if necessary. With the power system installed, you can return to the woodwork by fitting the top deck and then the bottom panel. Make sure to tape up any stray leads to get them out of the way. If you do get a bit of glue spillage here and there, you can wipe it away with a spare scrap of balsa. With this panel under the landing gear, you might have to remove a small amount of material around the wire legs. Cutting this to fit your specific landing gear, with everyone's being slightly different, you will be able to get a really tight fit which really adds a little more to the overall strength of the landing gear once you've added some glue. Next, you can add the cowling piece.
For the windscreen part, there are no tabs. This is because you will need to sand the bottom side of it slightly to get a flush fit on the cowling. To make a simple sanding block, something that will come in helpful later, take a scrap of balsa and wrap a little sandpaper around it. Sand down the edge of the windscreen at a 45 degree angle and then glue it to the fuselage. Now this is where you can really go to town with the sanding block. Although not necessary if you want to build your cub in a record breaking time, you can create a super nice finish on your model by carefully sanding the fuselage to blend the panels together. On the wing, carefully sand in the direction of the grain and round out the leading and trailing edges. Taking the time to do this will also make the covering process a little easier and you'll end up with a nicer looking aircraft in the end. Next you'll want to pop out the pieces of your tail and then you can start curving each side with a sanding block. Sometimes on some of the more curved parts you might find a loose piece of sandpaper will contour better and provide a smoother finish. Okay, onto the covering phase. This really isn't as complex as it might look at first, and you'll soon get the hang of it, if this is your first plane. There are many ways to cover a flying model, but using covering film is probably one of the easiest and cleanest methods. This stuff is called Aura Cover, and is available in many different styles and colours. Mark out a shape with a pencil, and then cut it out. It might be worth starting with a tail surface, as these are flat, simple, and quite small. We will have a dedicated video on this whole subject soon, but essentially you can cut out each piece, peel off the backing paper, lay it over your part and then heat up the film with an iron to activate the iron-on adhesive. You start by tacking on the sides with the lower heat setting of your modelling iron and then heating up the rest of it with the higher heat setting. This will shrink down the film and make sure that it creates a smooth finish on your part.
With larger parts such as the fuselage, take it side by side and really take your time. Some areas might be a bit tricky to get into, but this is where a decent modelling iron comes in handy. Okay, with your parts finished, let's finish the model. One of the last things to do is to assemble the cub's tail. The vertical stabiliser is simply inserted into the horizontal stabiliser like this. To set the control surfaces up, you will need to grab your mylar hinges. You will also need the two push rods and your two pre-centred servos. The only other thing that is needed is the last part left on the ply sheet, which is the part that connects the two elevator halves together. The elevator connector can be sanded down slightly so that it doesn't interfere with the rotation of the elevator once hinged. By far one of the easiest ways to hinge your control surfaces would be to simply use tape but we wanted to include hinges so that you could do it the proper way if you wanted. The hinges are very carefully spliced into the sheet wood by carefully cutting slots with a knife. When you have matched the hinges to the slots made on the opposite piece, you can slide the two together and run some glue into the gaps. The same process can now be carried out to articulate the rudder.
Once the tail subassembly is complete, you can fit it to the rear of the fuselage using the tab. To install your servos, start by scratching up the rear sides with sandpaper to improve glue adhesion. Next run your push rods through the holes at the rear of the fuselage right up to the central compartment. Now you can glue your servos to the inside of the fuselage at the marked location. You should be able to see an etched box on each side which will show you where these go. To attach your push rod to the control horn, loosely place the horn in the slots of your elevator and rudder. Bend your wire slightly to make sure that it roughly meets the horn and create a Z bend. You can do this with a special tool or just use some pliers. Cut the wire and hook the control horn around the wire. You might need to open up the hole slightly on the control horn. Use the middle hole for a good range of movement on both the elevator and the rudder. Finally, you can glue the control horn in place. Of course, you will need to repeat all of this for the rudder on your cub. We will go into more detail on installing control surfaces in a future video on the subject of control horn geometry and aircraft setup. To make sure that your wing can attach to your fuselage, you'll want to cut the remaining dowel to size, about 2 inches over the width of the fuselage, and slide them through the upper fuselage holes. This will be for elastic bands to attach to later on. When it comes to wheels, it's up to you which you choose, but we'd recommend these big 2.5 inch rubber wheels that we stock on the Vintage Model Company website. To attach them, simply add a little tape to your axle until it is the right diameter for the wheel to spin smoothly, and then add a blob of hot glue to each side. Of course, you can add skis, floats, or any other landing gear that you'd like. To give your battery somewhere to grip onto, add a strip of velcro to the underside of the power pod. Thank you. 
With the electronics installed and the aircraft finished, you can power up your model to check that the control surfaces are absolutely centered. Next, you can rubber band your wing onto the fuselage. Finally, the very last step before you go out to fly your new plane is to add the propeller. Now, propellers are dangerous things, so don't power up your plane indoors with this attached and be very careful around the aircraft. Again, we're going to release another video soon that goes through the steps before a maiden flight. But in the meantime, let's show you how this plane flies. Exactly perfect. And again, a bit further to my right. Oh, that's lovely. That was a nice shot actually, because it's yellow shade up against the uh, ground nicely there. Okay, thanks so much for watching this video and for building the new Balsa Basics cover kit. We can't wait to see yours, so make sure to send us some pictures when you've done. Subscribe to catch the next video, like this video to show your support, and we will see you in the next one. Cheers!